All right. I'm going to move. I, I know I'm going fast, but I'm just like, I, there's so many things I want to ask about. Um, I'm going to move on to talent. Also, I, I, I kind of find, I find talent a, like a little vague also. Um, and the reason why is because every discipline has a different definition of talent, right? And possibly a different way to measure it. Like, for example, what qualifies as talent for an athlete or an academic or an artist, you know, they may be com completely different, right? And it's tough to have a single conversation about those three particular types of talent. Well, talking to you, I feel like I've met my soulmate. I, you know, I have all the same questions that you do. And, you know, so many people are actually unlike you and me. And they're like very happy to use the word talent without ever defining it. And like, you know, stopping to ask, like, what do I really mean um, by this magical word? Um, I even have a graduate student. He's actually a former NFL quarterback who is now getting his PhD in psychology. Um, he started graduate school even later than me. He's like, in, you know, past 32 um, he's already got two kids and people have asked him like, what the heck are you doing going to graduate school? Um, most of his friends I think are athletes and, um, and he wants to study talent and he wants to study how people use this word. And in his experience as a former professional athlete, sometimes this word talent, um, you know, coaches will use it just to mean like how skilled you are. Right. Um, and, and then other times they use it to maybe refer more to your potential mm. and, and to whether you have like the X factor. So I agree with you that there is a lot of um, confusion about what this word means, or at least that people are using it differently. And sometimes even the same person, I think, can be using it differently in different contexts. Yeah. But one problem, I mean, there's a piano teacher um, named Cindy Lamb who I interviewed, and she said, I call it the T word. She, she <laughs> doesn't want to use it because for her young students who are, you know, like five, six, seven years old, when they start thinking about talent, they do think of it as kind of like you have it or you don't. And oh my God, if I, what, what if everyone thinks I have it and I don't? So I think it has a lot of baggage with it. This word that we use in different ways has a kind of um, like implication of giftedness and innateness um, and something you can't change. You either got it and you were lucky or you didn't get it and you were unlucky. Yeah. I, I like to talk about skill more than or mastery more than talent because it doesn't have as much of that baggage. So, all right. So we'll get to skill, but we need to, you've, you, you're actually pretty good about this. You have a really tidy way of bringing the desperate definitions of talent together. You say talent is the rate at which one increases in skill with effort. Right. That's pretty clean. You, that, that goes across all the disciplines. That's my definition. And yeah. I was trying to, you know, like you, I was trying to be cleaner. Right. I was like, eh, let's get to some precision here. And I think when I when I when I define talent this way, then I can say, OK, now I can say how it's different from skill. Right. It, like talent is how quickly you improve in your skill when you when you try, when you right. put in effort. Skills actually how well you do something. Right. OK. So. All right. Let me think about that. So if skill equals talent times effort, then that just means, all right, how good you've become at something like swimming or spelling or whatever. Then achievement is skill times effort. Hold on, do I have that right? Okay, so that would yeah, be like set, yeah. that would be like setting you know the world record in freestyle or winning the script spelling bee or something like that. Is, is that right? Yeah. So like, let's use Will Smith, my favorite example, because he's <laughs> my Smith. favorite human being. I'm a, like a total fangirl. He's a Philly, so, right? He's a Philly guy, just like you. A Philly kid. And I'm a Philly kid. And yeah. I got to hug him once in my life and I will never forget it. Um, but I've, I've, I've been following him because he's actually a brilliant psychologist. And, you know, the things that he says, I'm just thinking like, wow, it took us like a century to figure it out. But you 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 figure it out on your own. So um, so one of the things that uh, Will Smith would say is that, you know, talent, you know, you're born with, but skill you earn from hours and hours of beating on your craft. And if you just take him as an example, I think that he has um, very, very high skill as an actor. But if you imagine that Will Smith at his like level of skill just stopped producing movies, right, then you can't say that he's still achieving. You could say he's at a high level of skill, but he's not achieving more. He's just like stopped. So what I really admire about Will Smith is that he has improved his skill over years and he continues to become a better actor and challenge himself. But he's still making movies like every new movie that he makes you know, every project that he works on is a new accomplishment. So I think of people who are, you know, um, 
you know, most admirable and successful are the ones who are always building on their skill, but they're using their skill. I mean, they're doing things with that developed skill. And, and those are the things that make a difference in the world, right? You know, they're building companies, they're starting organizations, they're, you know, if a doctor is a great doctor, but they stop treating patients, the, you know, the, then their skill might be high, but they're not accomplishing, you know, unless they're applying that skill. So I think you buried the lead, though, right? The, the, to, my, to me, the significant thing is we just did these two formulas, right? Effort shows up twice. Yes. And so in the way that I talk to my children, um, I will say to you as well that, you know, when they come home and they tell me that, you know, some kid in their class is you know really talented at math and like they don't need to study and, you know, that, that they, it feels to them like they'll never catch up. You know, I tell them that, you know, talent times effort equals skill. So, of course, talent counts. But because you need to apply effort again to to make that skill turn into an achievement, that effort counts twice. Yeah. The, I mean, by that definition, it's the biggest determinant in grit. Well, that, by the way, is a very, you know, a beautiful mathematical equation, like it appears twice. I think there's some truth to it. But uh, but I will say that, you know, that's my idea. And, you know, we need to do more research to confirm if that's true. But I do think about just common sense. You know, uh, you know, if you are somebody like Will Smith, who is like constantly working every time you do a movie, he becomes I mean, I assume every time he does a project like a movie or a show, he does get a little better. Right. But at the same time, he's accomplished more. I mean, every time you do an interview, you probably learn something, you get like a little bit better. But that's another interview in the can for you. Um, and I feel like that about my own work as a psychologist. Every time I write a paper, I've gotten to be a slightly better psychologist, mm. but the paper itself is an accomplishment. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do like to think of my effort paying off twice. You know, I, I, I got a win on skill and I got a win in terms of actually achieving something. 